Today I'm gonna to be going over small business marketing strategies and I'm gonna be using examples of companies that I have actually worked with and many of these are businesses that I have been a customer with in the past. So not every single one, but getting started here, the very, very first thing. So earlier this year, I had to get trees cut down in my backyard. So in order to get those trees cut down, I had to contact a tree service. So the second tree service I contacted was Saw Right Tree Service right here. So I found them through a Google search. So you could see they are sponsored. So that's one good thing there. Um, I saw they have really good product or very good customer reviews. And if we come into their website, basically come in here, they ha contact them directly through their phone number, give them a call and they answer. They sent someone over to my house within a couple hours to give me an estimate. The estimate was less than I expected to spend. So basically the small business marketing strategy here is answer the phone and reply to your prospects as quickly as possible. So whether you are somebody that just simply has some type of contact form, so if somebody's coming into your website, filling out your contact form, looking for a basic estimate request, answer these as fast as you possibly can and answer the phone. So if you're not answering the phone and you are not answering these requests, this was the second company I contacted. The first company I contacted did not answer the phone and they were currently open. So if you see a company's not open, that's one thing, but this company was open, I called them, they didn't answer, I called this company right after, they answered, they sent someone over and they got my business. So number one, answer the phone, reply to customers promptly. Next is gonna be number two, and this is a business I have not used, but basically giving you a really good example. So real estate lawyer, real estate law in general, very competitive, but Atlanta real estate lawyers, if you come in here, so you have some businesses at the top, but as we scroll down, you can see this one, this page right here is ranking pretty high went in here and you can see coming to this website they have a page for real estate law under their real estate law page you could see all of these different legal services they offer when you go to each of these different legal services you can see that they have articles written that are basically based on keyword research so number two is going to be basically invest in search engine optimization invest in keyword research invest in content creation Something as simple as making sure that you are having pages written for all of these different types of things that people may be interested in as far as the types of real estate law that you offer, then what that's going to do is it's going to help you rank for all of those different keywords. And using just a quick spy foo search for this website right here, you can see that not only is their traffic increasing recently, but you can see they are ranking for over 1,700 organic keywords, estimated monthly SEO clicks 868, an increase in estimated monthly SEO clicks. These are clicks that for paid keywords would cost a minimum of $20 probably. So if you're, if you're actually targeting keywords like real estate law in Atlanta or wherever, it's going to be an expensive keyword. So if you can drive SEO traffic to your website, that is the main reason why you wanna invest in SEO. So they could probably do a simple two, $3,000 investment and that as simple as that can get them all of these different articles written and if they already have somebody who's working for them in their marketing department, basically if you have somebody working for you that's managing your website, it is time to invest in search engine optimization, keyword research, content creation, focusing on all of these main keywords that you need to target. And this is gonna bring us into our next one over here. So in addition to the real estate law website I was just showing you, this is a website and a company that I have used in the past for air conditioning services. So one of the reasons I found them is with a Google search and they have very good reviews and they have a very good website that shows all of the different services that they do. So heating and cooling, you can see all of these different services that they have, plumbing, all of these different services they have as well. Now, when you call them, they answer the phone, they are very organized. They also have a website that is SEO optimized. So they actually follow all three of the first three strategies that we've already gone over, making sure you answer the phone, making sure that people can easily contact you and they answer you very quickly when you do. And they are also, uh, investing in search engine optimization because they rank pretty high in search engines for some of these local keywords that people are searching based on the different areas that they serve. And then last but not least, so this is number three, is making sure you have a very user-friendly website that goes over all the different services you offer and makes it very easy for people to contact you. You don't want a website where people don't know how to contact you, they don't understand what you do. Just basically build out your website, another thing to invest in along with search engine optimization, along with content creation, and along with keyword research is basically going over all of these different things so people have a full understanding of what your business offers. So a quick recap of the first three marketing strategies that we have. Number one, answer the phone. Number two, invest in search engine optimization. And number three, create a user-friendly website that clearly goes over all of the different services that you offer.
Okay, number four is going to be uh, spend time uh, doing social media marketing using the channels that your customers use. So High Cotton Charleston is a restaurant that I like in Charleston. My wife and I like it. And they have a very active Facebook page. They have 12,000 likes on their page. And they post frequent, frequently about things that are happening at their restaurant, user-generated content, basically different dishes that they have. So all sorts of different things they are constantly posting directly to their Facebook page. They also have all the information about their Facebook page here as well. And if we open up, they have an Instagram page. So within their Instagram page, they share similar things to Facebook, but they also have some specials, some pictures of different dishes. And over here, you can see some of the different information that they have on their Instagram page as well. Now, a in a more competitive market, we also have 11 Madison Park. So this is a luxury restaurant in New York City. And you can see on their Instagram page, which they are very active with, 375,000 followers on their Facebook page, 108,000 followers, 98,000 likes. And they are constantly posting things as well. In addition to content like this, where you have a reel talking about their pastry team working for Bake It Nice this Saturday. So using content and posting it to social media, you could see 11 Madison Park has over three, almost 500,000 people between these two pages here that are following those two pages. And then same with High Cotton in Charleston. So between Instagram and between Facebook, you have almost 25,000 people that you can easily send out your information to. Now, not all 25,000 are gonna see it, but having people following you and staying consistent and also showing your food at the same time is going to encourage people to visit your restaurant. So this one is basically focus on the social media channels that your customers use. Okay, number five now is going to be listen to your customers, listen to reviews, and use the information from existing customers to improve your product so you can drive new customers. So copy.ai, I signed up with last year before ChatGPT really kind of uh, became really popular, and copy.ai is not a bad tool. I've never left them a review because I'm still on a yearly plan. I don't plan to renew my yearly plan, but if we come over here into their ratings review, you can see their all-time ratings on this website is a 4.0 out of 47 ratings. So basically what they should do is look at all of their positive reviews, see some of the things that they're doing well, things that people like, and then especially looking at the dislikes. It's not the best for long-form content or content on specific topics. Creates decent content, but not outstanding content. So basically, if you're copy.ai, use this review to say, okay, we need to improve our long-form content generation system so that we can come up with better long-form blog posts so that we're not losing customers and that our existing customers are not leaving reviews that's showing that they dislike our overall service with long-form content. So if you view more likes and dislikes, basically going through things that people like and going through things that people don't like is basically a quick and easy way to understand how you can actually improve your service. Now here is basically what happened with me. Free tools like ChatGPT with similar features, pricing can be reduced, product UI is not that engaging, can be further simplified, not a foolproof content. Even after final content, human intervention is needed as the AI model learns from the existing data. So basically right here are some very quick and easy things for the copy.ai team to look at and improve. And basically you can use your existing customers, specifically things that customers dislike, but also making sure that things that customers like you're still improving because you don't wanna fall behind competitors. So using customer reviews to actually improve your product is one of the best ways to keep your existing customers and drive new customers. Okay, number six, and we're going to come right back to our High Cotton example and our 11 Madison Park example. So for the High Cotton Charleston restaurant, your, the Google business profile is so important if you have a local business. So what you can do is you have your Google reviews here. So very good reviews, restaurant, people can reserve a table directly from your Google business profile, visit your website, get directions, save this business, call this business. And then over here, you can constantly make sure that your hours are updated. So if you're going to be closed on a specific day, if you ever change your hours, you can always update them here. Phone number, menu, people can book reservations. You can also list events here. So another example is 11 Madison Park. So if we come in, they have service options. They have where it's located. Similar things, but there's also some information here. Salary, dress code, opinions, price per person, reservations. And then they also have a bunch of upcoming events questions and answers, reviews, and then information from 11 Madison Park all the way down here to make a reservation, profiles for Instagram, and then they have people also search for at the very bottom. 
So a Google business profile is basically a great way to show customers that not only what times are we open, here's how you can contact us, here's how you can purchase from us, but then people can also go in and see some of the different photos of your business. They can see photos of the food and drink at your business, and then they can even, and I could use this all the time, is the street view in 360, seeing where a business is located and potentially finding where you're supposed to park when you are going to some of these different businesses. So a good Google business profile is a great way to drive more customers and you should absolutely have a Google business profile for your local location and make sure that it's constantly up to date with your hours, correct phone number, correct website. Make sure all that information is updated. Okay, next is gonna be number seven and I'm also gonna be using this for number eight. So I recently switched my email newsletter to Beehive. So B-E-E-H-I-I-V.com. Uh, so Beehive, is an email marketing tool. And one of the reasons why I switched to Beehive is, and this is going to be our small business marketing strategy number seven, they created very helpful videos about every aspect of using Beehive. So when I was getting started, I watched all of these videos, I signed up for a free trial, basically learned how everything works on Beehive. So they have feature updates, they have how to use all the different features of the Beehive platform. And then they also have some helpful content about as far as how to create a successful newsletter. So creating content for people to learn how to actually use your platform, creating content for people so they understand what your business does, what your process is, is a great way to drive more customers as well. So for example, somebody who installs pools for a living, you can say, okay, well, the next time we install a pool, we're gonna hire somebody who is gonna take video or we are just gonna take video ourselves and then at the very end, we're gonna show the process throughout this video of here is how we install a pool, here's the step-by-step -step process. And then even if you have a video set up and you kind of speed up the whole thing and show that step-by-step -step process, that you probably wanna hire someone for doing this, that something that simple and being able to use that on your website, on your YouTube channel, post it to your Facebook page, and you can constantly use this content. So if you're using that content and showing here's the before and after of the work that we do, it could be as simple as somebody who's a local painting company. So somebody who offers painting to, to residential customers and commercial businesses could basically say here is the before and here is the after, before and after we painted and how much better it looks. So something that simple can be a great way to drive more customers. So number seven is to make sure that you are creating helpful video content so that users can understand what your services are, how to use your platform, or anything else that basically takes a prospect to a customer much easier so they can understand exactly what your business does and how they can get the most from your business. Number eight is going to be an email marketing. So basically start sending out weekly emails to your customers. You can use a tool as simple as Beehive. If you come in here to pricing, their launch plan is $0 up to 2,500 subscribers. So the local liquor store by me actually just has a clipboard there with where people can just put their email down. They always have emails on this, uh, on this page on this clipboard. And it's basically that simple. And all they do is manually add each individual email to their email list. And they send out a weekly newsletter for liquor tastings and specials. It's that simple. That drives so many more customers into the store, and this is one of the most successful liquor stores around, and it's such a simple process where you can go to their website and also join their newsletter, but for peep customers that are going into the store, they basically say, if you're interested in seeing our specials and our liquor tastings, just enter your email here, and the cashier will say to you, do we have your email yet? I say yes. When I said no, they said, okay, write it down, we'll send you a weekly email, and they do. And it's that simple to basically just use something like beehive.com, and you can easily send out weekly emails to customers and engage them and get more people coming back into your business. So number eight is going to be create an email marketing newsletter. Okay, number nine is going to be invest in Google ads, invest in Facebook ads. So those are basically the two platforms I would recommend first and foremost. I would probably start with Google ads. I think they have so many different options for advertisers. Facebook ads can be great for a lot of businesses as well, but Saw Right Tree Service, they have a sponsored, uh, they have a sponsored ad right here in Google. And then the other example I have is just continuing on our email marketing example. When somebody types in a specific keyword, email marketing tools in Google ads, you wanna make sure that your ad is showing up here because there are four advertisements before we get to this for email marketing tools from sources across the web, before we finally get to our first organic search result, which is Sprout Social. So not only should companies like abhive.com invest in search engine optimization, content creation, keyword research, they should also be running paid advertising as well. Now for a newer company, they may not be that interested in spending a ton of money on Google ads. 
Obviously, these are all massive, massive companies and companies that may have much larger user bases and much larger revenue, although Beehive is a very popular email marketing tool already, but they are pretty new. So what you want to do is you do want to focus on using some of these different platforms. Beehive may be better off on a Facebook ads for now because the cost per click for email marketing tools tends to be pretty high. So you do want to run Google ads, Facebook ads, even if you say, you know, we're going to, we're going to try a $5,000 test budget this year, and we'll see what type of results we can get from Google ads, from Facebook ads, spend, you know, two, $3,000 on each platform and see what types of results you're getting. And if you're not getting the right results, then what you want to do is just end your advertising. But you also don't want to quit too soon because it may take a couple months to really get your Google Ads campaigns on track, and it may take a couple months to really optimize your Facebook Ads campaign as well. But number nine is running Google Ads, running Facebook Ads, and making sure you're taking advantage of other paid advertising platforms, even if you want to run video ads on YouTube, Facebook, wherever. So making sure that you are running advertisements to continuously drive more customers back to your business. And my one other example here is basically if I'm looking for a new dentist, so Merle's Inlet Dentist, you can see right here at the top, General Dentistry, Restore Your Smile. This right here, just having this ad at the very top, uh, this is Charleston SC Dentist, a little far for me, just make sure that they are actually driving traffic to their website. So I don't know if they're ranking even on the first page, doesn't look like they are, so they should also be investing in SEO, keyword research, content creation, but... Otherwise, running ads is another great way to drive more customers to your business, and one customer at a dentist could become a customer that visits your office multiple times a year and anytime they need any dental surgery as well. Okay, we have three more here. First one is to offer customers some type of special promotion or an offer, especially something like LinkWhisper.com does. So I was about to sign up for LinkWhisper, and I was sitting on their pricing page. So when you go to get LinkWhisper now, brings you down here to their pricing. So I needed to buy the 10 site license. They sent me this, don't leave without a $10 off coupon code. Entered my name and email, send me the coupon code, basically didn't buy it right away. And a week later they sent me an even better coupon code. So something as simple as just offering a promotion to people, especially for a linkwhisper.com because this is a yearly price. So build annually until canceled. So if they get somebody who signs up for the 10 site license and they sign up for that license, and let's just say that I think I ended up spending $139 for the 10 site license. So the promotion got me to eventually say, okay, let's just sign up for this today because they sent me a limited offer in my email. But now I'm going to be a yearly customer who is going to be sending them $167 a year unless I decide to go with something else. But Link Whisper has been such a great tool for me that I probably will just continue with LinkWhisper.com. So as long as they don't raise their price too high, they pretty much have a customer for life. So offering a special promotion like this one, it's a great way to just encourage more customers to actually purchase from you. So I wouldn't say focus on just promotions, but doing things like this is going to help drive more people because... 167 becomes one, even just saying $10 off, people are like, all right, well, might as well uh, might as well sign up for this plan today. So just offering uh, special offers, promotions, discounts to new customers can be a great way to actually get them in the door. Okay, my next strategy is to partner with and connect with other local businesses that where you can both help each other amplify each other's businesses. So the example I'm going to be using here is this is a pet grooming salon. And you can see the services that they offer, if we just scroll down here, bathing and cleaning, brushing, detangling, haircut styling, nail trimming, ear cleaning, de-shedding treatments. Okay, so they offer these six services for grooming pets in the Myrtle Beach and Horry County area. Now, this one over here, AtlanticPetSitting.com, provides pet professional pet care services to Horry and Georgetown County. Services here, pet sitting, dog walking, cat sitting, and overnight stay. So basically, they offer two different services, but both of them are serving people who have pets. So why doesn't the dog groomer say, you know what, if you ever are going out of town, we have partnered with Atlantic Pet Sitting. And why doesn't Atlantic Pet Sitting say, if you ever need grooming, we are partnered with the Ori Dog Groomer. So it's really that simple to say, okay, why don't we have a, anybody who comes to us, we're going to offer, we're going to basically recommend you guys and anybody who comes to get pet sitting, we're going to uh, recommend you for grooming. So for local businesses, they can team up and basically say, okay, we offer two separate services to people with animals. So why don't we combine and maybe we'll find a dog walker as well and we'll get the dog walker. Although I think Atlantic Pet Sitting may offer dog, yeah, they offer dog walking as well. But basically combine with each other to offer each other, 
to offer their customers these other companies as well. And even if you say, you know what, since you worked with us, we offer a 10% new customer discount if you sign up and you just tell them that we referred you. So it's one way to partner with other local businesses to basically amplify both of your businesses and reach people who may also be interested in your services. So this is going to bring us to our last and final small business marketing strategy, and that is going to be to ask your customers for reviews. My family and I recently moved, so we had to use Life Storage in Merle's Inlet. So what they did is after a few months when I was there, they said, you know what, we do offer a 10% discount for anybody, basically a 10% monthly, every single month discount for anybody who leaves us a Google review and said, just let us know which Google review is yours. And then the other thing was, if you don't like our service before you leave a Google review, please just come in and talk to us because we will want to make sure that basically you're not going to go to Google and leave a one-star review. Now, they didn't tell me to leave a five-star review. They basically said, leave a review. If you don't like our services, please just let us know. If you do like our services, we'd really appreciate your review and we will offer a 10% discount. And they offer a discount whether you give them five stars or one star. So if we come in here and click on the Google reviews, you will see me right here. So I have great service. I would recommend them to anyone that needs storage space. Five stars. They were perfectly fine as far as storage and met all my needs. So didn't have any issues at all. And I had no issues leaving the review, especially for a discount. So those are some different small business marketing strategies that you should use. Uh, starting with answer the phone, replying to customers, investing in search engine optimization and investing in keyword research and content creation so you can rank high for some of these really competitive keywords creating a website that is very easy to use where people can easily understand all of your services, any products that you offer, and a website where people can easily contact you. Obviously, going back to answer the phone, make sure you answer the phone. Listening to your customer reviews to not only improve your services for existing customers, but also improve them and make sure that you're fixing some of the issues that other customers are having so you can keep customers and drive new customers. Making sure that you are focused on the social media channels that your customers are actually using. So just simply posting some of the different events that you're having, the food that you serve as a restaurant, is a great way to drive actual followers, likes, and getting more people to visit your restaurant. Optimizing your Google business profile. So making sure you're linking to your website, you have your address all uh, linked through Google Maps. People can call your business, you have a description, you have your Google reviews, service options, where you're located, hours that you're open, your phone number, and then you can also allow people to book reservations directly, well, give them where they can book reservations directly from your Google business profile, upcoming events, questions and answers, and then all these different reviews and information about your business. It's only gonna help you drive additional business. Next is making sure that you're creating really helpful content for prospects and current customers. So current customers who wanna know how to use your platform, prospects who wanna know what services you offer, prospects who wanna know what your actual process is for those services is a great way to basically educate your customers and people that may be potential customers as well. In addition to this, signing up and creating an email marketing newsletter. You can do this completely free using this platform. So you can get started with your email marketing newsletter, send out a weekly email or send out a monthly email, just going over a little bit more information, any upcoming events, any new products, any new services, any information that you may have for people that's gonna bring them back into your business. Now, the other thing you wanna do is make sure that you are investing in paid advertising. So something as simple as targeting local keywords and the business that you offer and making sure you get your ad at the top of the search results could drive more patients, more clients, more customers using Google ads, using Facebook ads. They're all great ways to drive more people to your website and drive more prospects that will eventually become customers for your business. Next is gonna be offering discounts and promotions specifically to new customers, especially if you know people are on your website and you're not sure if they are converting. It's a great way to focus on your conversion rate optimization and a great way to just get new customers in the door. Now I'm gonna be spending this yearly, so they got me in the door with a small promotion and it's honestly probably a really good investment overall for them. It's been a great investment for me, so you wanna make sure that you are using promotions and discounts to basically get people to take the next step. And then partnering with other local businesses, so other relevant businesses that have similar needs to people that are currently going to your business. So basically somebody who offers pet sitting and dog walking can combine forces with somebody who offers grooming. And you can also say, you know what, if you go with this other business, you get a 10% discount. So if you ever need grooming services, if you don't need grooming services, no problem. 
the groomer can say if you ever need cat, pat, pet sitting, cat sitting, dog sitting, dog walking services, or daycare services for your pet, then you can sign, go with this other company and we'll give you a 10% discount as well. Last but not least, ba asking your customers for reviews, testimonials, you can use them on your website, you can use them to actually drive new customers, and you can make sure that you have really good product reviews, especially if you're asking happy customers and saying, hey, if you like our service, uh, we'll give you a small discount if you just leave us a review. No matter what your review is, we will give you a small discount to do that. So if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comments section. There are plenty of other small business marketing strategies you can use, but as you gear up for your 2024 marketing strategy, these ones should all be very helpful for pretty much any small business that is looking to grow more customers, drive more sales, and increase their revenue in 2024. Thanks for watching my video today, and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.